Guten Morgen, meine Freunde. Wie geht's Ihnen? Hello, my friends. How are you today? Today, I'm joining you from Pernifax Ferry Battlefield State Park in Nicholas County, West Virginia. The ground that I'm standing on was part of the battle that took place here on September 10th, 1861, between Union soldiers under William Stark Rosecrans and Confederates under General John Floyd. And about three o'clock, on the road that you see behind me, Union columns of troops, about 7,000 strong, streamed down this road until they came within sight of the Confederate earthworks and breastworks that you cannot see behind you, but I will show you later. And when they came into sight of those breastworks, they formed into their battle lines and they attacked. They made a few assaults. The Union soldiers took approximately 130 casualties with about 28 fatalities. The Confederacy, however, took no reported fatalities and that was because of their very well entrenched position. The Confederates had been here for some time and the area was known to them as Camp Golly. It was a static camp with tents and they had ovens that they were baking fresh bread in every day and the Union forces, in my personal opinion, did not have a prayer of penetrating this position. However, that did not prevent them from the final victory. The house that you see behind me is known as the Patterson House. The Pattersons were staunch Unionists who did live here and farmed this land before the battle began. When the Confederates came into the area and established Camp Golly, the Pattersons actually fled their home and did not return for some time after the war ended. Inside, you can still see damage from the battle where the house was situated right in between the Union and the Confederate lines. And if you get a chance while you're here, be sure to check it out inside. It's really cool inside. They've got artifacts on the battlefield, there's a museum, and there's even a gift shop. Perfect for those souvenirs that you're going to want. One of the more interesting sites that I find here at the Carnifex Ferry Battlefield is this grave of Private Granville Blevins of the 45th Virginia Infantry. He did not die in the battle here. He actually died of a fever three days before the fighting took place here. He enlisted with his brother and some of his friends on May 28, 1861 down in Withful, Virginia, and due to the proximity of his death with the battle, this would have been fresh dirt. His friends buried him close to where they were camped over at Camp Golly, and his grave would have seen some of the deadly fighting that took place here on the afternoon of September 10, 1861. Behind me, you can see the reconstructed breastworks where the Confederate forces had their approximate position during the fighting. The Confederates under John Floyd, after the battle, retreated during the night for reasons that are still speculated by historians to this day. Some say he was out of ammunition. Some say he reassessed his position. My own personal, unsolicited opinion. He did not want to be blamed for a loss if he was attacked again the following day and he couldn't hold out. Former Governor Henry Wise was also in the area with his soldiers, and they refused to support General Floyd during the fighting. If he could pin this on Henry Wise as the reason he had to leave, that would make him look all the better and make his opponent look all the worse. That's my personal opinion on the matter. However, the fact stands that during the night, General Floyd managed to evacuate his Confederate army down the old ferry road with only a single candle to light the way under the cover of darkness, leaving only a flag behind for the Union Army to see, which is pretty remarkable, really, if you think about it, because the enemy was just over there within eyesight of all this. They had to hear what was going on, and this was pretty remarkable feat pulled off by General Floyd. I wanted to take a minute to thank you for joining me here at Carnifex Ferry Battlefield State Park. Take care, God bless, and I'll look forward to seeing you at the next Uniformed Historian site.